So today's topic is going to be the end of the Vietnam War. We're not going to talk a lot about the actual combat that took place. We're mostly going to talk about the politics of ending the war and why the United States decided to leave and why it is so looming in the American memory. The Vietnam War is so important. So we're going to talk a lot about Nixon today. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these objectives, but we're going to talk a lot about Nixon and the effect the Vietnam War has on the United States. So the peace process really begins when Nixon is elected president in 1969. He is a Republican as opposed to the Democrats, Johnson and Kennedy before him, and his main platform was ending the war. The war is very unpopular in the United States. There's riots, there's protests, the anti-war movement is very strong. So Nixon knows that he has to end the war. He has to get the U.S. troops home. And what he'll do is he will send the guy in the picture below, Henry Kissinger, to actually go to North Vietnam and begin negotiating the end to this war. His plan is called Vietnamization, and what he wants to do is turn the war over to the Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese specifically. And this is his peace, part of his peace with honor plan. What's going to happen is the war is going to be turned over to the South Vietnamese. If you look in that picture in the bottom left-hand corner, you can see the Vietnamese, the South Vietnamese army surrounding the American troops. Slowly, the Vietnamese troops are going to take over combat operations. They're going to be the ones taking the fight to the Viet Cong in the north instead of the Americans, and then those American troops can be shipped home. The goal is to create that stable government in South Vietnam that is anti-communist so that it can stand on its own against the north. This is highly supported by many Americans because of the fact that the war is just not popular. People want their troops home. They don't see a point to continuing this long, long war any longer. So some of the reasons for U.S. withdrawal, though, are what we're going to go over. There's hundreds of different reasons, but the three that I'm going to go over probably had the biggest effect on the United States. So the first one is actually two other countries, and that is Laos and Cambodia. If you look at that map in the bottom right-hand corner, what you'll see is that Vietnam runs a long border with both Laos and Cambodia, and this train is very mountainous, it's jungle, it's very remote, so All this area has Viet Cong and North Vietnamese infiltrating it, and communism is spreading to both Laos and Cambodia. So the United States naturally begins to assist Laos by bombing Laos and trying to get rid of its communists. This destabilizes the nation. Second, and more importantly, is Nixon immediately orders the bombing of Cambodia. Cambodia housed a lot of Viet Cong bases, and the U.S. has to destroy those if they're going to be successful in the war. We've gone over the Ho Chi Minh Trail, and that was one of the key things that went through Cambodia. The Ho Chi Minh Trail supported the Viet Cong in the south, so it needed to be destroyed, and that's why Nixon eventually orders the bombing and invasion of Cambodia. So they go in there, they try to destroy the Viet Cong, but Nixon had already promised to end the war, and this is the exact opposite of it. Obviously, he's spreading the war now into Cambodia, which is going to be highly unpopular with Americans back home. So you can see the Ho Chi Minh Trail here winding its way down from North Vietnam into Laos, into Cambodia, and into South Vietnam. So Laos and Cambodia both begin to grow huge communist movements, and the United States obviously does not want communism to spread to Cambodia and Laos because it's kind of proving the domino theory there. You can see the picture in the bottom. That is all the bombing missions that happened in Laos. Hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands, of bombing missions, just from 65 to 73. And then When this plan was found out, Nixon went on TV and explained to people what was going on in Cambodia and Laos, tried to get the American people on his side, but we're going to see that it really does not work. One of the key catalysts in the anti-war movement will be May 4th, 1970 at Kent State University. So right down the road at Kent, there was a large anti-war movement, and protests had been going on throughout the year, but they kind of all came together on May 4th. So the night before, on May 3rd, windows had been smashed, bottles had been thrown, a riot had occurred in the town of Kent itself. And the protesters were pushed back to the college campus. And the 
protest was over the invasion of Cambodia. It wasn't even over Vietnam. I mean, it was kind of over the conflict as a whole. But these were the students who would eventually be drafted to go to Vietnam. So they wanted to avoid going to that war. They didn't want the expansion of the war. The National Guard is brought in to kind of put the protests down from the local units out at Ravenna. And what happens is there's bottles thrown, there's rocks thrown. You can see tear gas is launched from the National Guard. But one of the issues is the National Guard, nobody knows why, was given live ammo. They were given real bullets. And they begin to line up. And they are told where they're going to push the protesters out and they're going to kind of end this protest before it even becomes a riot on the campus. For some reason, when the National Guard reaches the top of the hill, you can see in the bottom left-hand picture, there's kind of a hill behind that building. They open fire. No one knows why to this day. There's a recording of it, but nobody knows why they open fire. And what happens are four students are hit and killed at Kent State. And this is going to galvanize the protest movement in the United States because now the United States isn't just like putting protests and riots down. It's shooting its own citizens and not even its own citizens. It's shooting its own children. And this is going to make the war very, very unpopular. You can see the location of the shooting here. If you've ever been to Kent State, this may look a little familiar. Um, some of you may even end up living in some of these dorms. If you go to Kent State, but you can see the guard was at the top of the hill. They fired down into the parking lot and students were hit and killed there. A lot of students were wounded, but four were killed. Famous picture from the protest. And then these were the four students that were killed. I think three of the four students were not even at the protest. They two were walking by. Um, one was just watching from afar. They just happened to be in the path of the bullets when they were fired. So the most important reason and the one that really turned the United States against the war was actually this, the Pentagon Papers. So the Pentagon Papers are released to the press, they're leaked, and they were documents that proved that the United States had always wanted to enter the Vietnam War even a long time before the Gulf of Tonkin incident. So it was planned that the United States was going to enter this war. And it said that the government was – involving U.S. soldiers without even telling the people that they had lied to Congress about the involvement of U.S. soldiers and that the executive branch had been basically waging their own secret war without approval from Congress. This is going to make the United States really distrust its government. They're going to say, you involved us in this war. You got us into this mess. Now you need to get us out. So the end of U.S. involvement comes with the Paris Peace Accords in 1973. So this accord is signed, and it's not a real peace treaty. It just kind of settles the issue of the war. So the first thing that's going to happen is the U.S. is going to remove all its troops. We are going to get all our troops out of South Vietnam, and we're not allowed to come back. Both sides are going to agree to release their prisoners of war. And the Viet Cong, the National Liberation Front in the South, they're going to become their own political party. So they basically become the Communist Party of South Vietnam. So you can kind of see that the Viet Cong basically won. They weren't destroyed, and now they're even more legitimate because they're allowed to become a political party. The major issue with it is it doesn't settle the future of the South. The South is still a mess, and the North is going to see that the South is very corrupt, it's very weak, and they're going to take advantage of this because the goal is to reunify Vietnam for both sides. So the North ends up, two years after the Paris Peace Accords, actually invading South Vietnam in 1975. The South Vietnamese army basically vaporizes in a couple weeks. The North overruns most of South Vietnam. Saigon falls, and Vietnam is reunited under a communist government in the North in 1975. It's a very costly war with over 2 million Vietnamese dead. It's a long-running war. Much of the countryside is destroyed. Their infrastructure, their commerce is very destructive to their economy. The U.S. lost 58,000 soldiers over the time we were there. Doesn't seem like a large number for how long we were there, but remember, this is a America's first huge war um, since Korea. So the United States really is not used to fighting these large wars anymore. 
and a large amount of South Vietnamese decide to flee the country. They're refugees. A lot of them are people who had worked for the U.S., they were soldiers in the army, and they know that the communists from the north will immediately execute them. Whenever the communists would sweep into an area, they would round up all the government workers, they'd round up teachers, they'd round up anybody who was educated, and what they would do is they would execute them so they would not be a threat to the communist rule. You can see here some of the pictures of the fall of South Vietnam. That one in the top, that's the final kind of push of the North Vietnamese taking the presidential palace of South Vietnam. You can see the evacuations of the United States helicopters. There weren't even enough room on the carriers to land all the helicopters, so they pushed some into the sea. People are just panicked trying to get out of South Vietnam before the communists take over. Now, in the United States, the effect was $150 billion was spent in the war. You have to remember for inflation, money was worth a lot more back then. So this is a huge cost of this war over all these years. And what this does is it makes it that there's economic issues because if you're at war, you can't spend money on other things. You can't spend it on roads. You can't spend it on you know, building utilities. You can't spend it on health care. You have to pick and choose what you're spending on. So there's less domestic spending. There's less spending in the United States. There's more spending on the war. And we're going to learn about this when we do our domestic policy, but it's the great society. This was President Johnson's idea of how to fix poverty, how to fix health care inequality, how to fix the racial issues in the United States. But because the United States was spending money on the war, there couldn't be money to be spent on the great society, so the great society kind of failed. A positive thing that comes out of it is the War Powers Act. If you remember back to the beginning of this unit, Vietnam was waged without a direct declaration of war. There was no where Congress voted and declared war on North Vietnam. It was just they got the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, and the U.S. could defend its interests in Vietnam. But what the War Powers Act is going to do is it's going to make it so Congress is now the only one who can declare war. They're going to take back their power to declare war. The president has 60 days to send troops somewhere. And after 60 days, he has to go to Congress and say, I want approval. I want a formal declaration of war against this nation. So I hope this helped you understand the end of Vietnam and the United States getting out of Vietnam and some of the impacts. And as always, if you have any questions, just ask.